My name is Ian Kuppens. I'm a collaborator at 1010. Um, I studied, well, I'm working here now almost two years, so new in the game, let's say. Um, I studied at the University in Ghent, where I also did my thesis a bit on the yeah, uh, subject of circular economy and the reproductive city, starting from looking at production in the city, specifically for Brussels. Um, and I also did a few projects of which M4H in Rotterdam, dealing with uh, yeah, flows, metabolism and circular economy. Um, so yeah. And circular city ports. And circular city ports, <laughs> not to forget. Still going on. <laughs> Uh, yes, and then I'm uh, Nadia Casabella, uh, principal at uh, Ten Ten, and uh, associate uh, uh, associ uh, assistant professor at uh, the uh, ULB uh, Faculty of Architecture at Cambridge. Uh, started using. I heard it for the first time in a lecture. Um, it was a lecture given at the university from by um, I think Eric from Metabolic. Um, he was then doing uh, research on Rotterdam in the framework of the IABR uh, productive cities, and that's how I kind of came into the subject. And also later on, uh, wanted to do my thesis around this uh, subject. Um, we also had to do a kind of critical uh, paper of this, uh, this topic series. And what struck me when I dive into the lecture is that this concept has been there for a long time, like metabolic rifts, this, this, this uh, kind of uh, concept. Um, but on the other hand, it was very eye-opening. And once again, for me, it was a kind of, um, it showed a bit, it, it pinpointed a bit more, or looked more at the kind of making the subject of urbanism more relevant again where it started, I think. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, the study was um, yeah, place-based but not with actors. And I think here in the process of the well, uh, a long year of thesis, for me was was very... Um, Enriching in that fact to look at the kind of yeah who is going to do who is going to do it in the end, um, and I think that's also something that uh, Ten Ten uh, emphasizes in its practice to look at these uh, yeah actors who are busy with it in their daily life, but also who are busy with it to plan it to to um, yeah the institutions that, that could carry out uh, policies to look at what their role could be. So to design a bit the agency, the, 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 the capability of, of acting upon these flows and this, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the first time I heard of our uh, metabolism, uh, I think it was uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands. I've been uh, working there uh, for a long time in different periods. Uh, uh, along my life, yeah, across my life, and uh, I think it was uh, through uh, uh, HNS, the work of HNS, and Dirk Simons in particular. Uh, uh, he was uh, mentioning about this, uh, uh, yeah, aura metabolism, and this brought me to this uh, Marxist uh, theory of the metabolic uh, rift, of mm -hmm. course. And then uh, it stayed a bit there, uh, kind of in, a, uh, in the background, without uh, gaining any kind of importance or being a guiding topic in the way I was uh, working, uh, until uh, we started at the Faculty of Architecture of uh, La Cambre Urta, we started uh, organizing different uh, master classes. And also defining the the kind of uh, objectives of the new research center of Luis. Mm -hmm. uh, we were discussing uh, what this research center should be about, and then in the beginning it was about uh, infrastructures. Uh, logically, so because we had been working around uh, notably railway infrastructures, and I had also a past in. Uh, uh, fundamental research around uh, transit-oriented development, but then at that moment uh, I, I, I kind of started to feel that maybe the introduction of the ecologico, uh, of the ecology in the 
the research center, the ecological part was uh, very important. That uh, we were busy with the kind of realization and programming of the, all these infrastructures, but uh, we did not uh, pay attention to the environmental impact, not from a technical point of view, but uh, from a kind of a holistic uh, uh, understanding of the environment uh, where you are acting upon. And I thought, yeah, maybe it's, a, it's an opportunity to start uh, talking about these issues. And, um, and then, yeah, this brought us to certain people, uh, notably you later on, uh, who was uh, doing a doctoral research, doctoral dis dissertation around our metabolism. But of course, at the same time as we uh, introduced this issue in the uh, research center, of course, Dubigno and all the kind of theory that had been built around urban ecology in Brussels uh, became very important, kind of a, a reference eh, in everything we were thinking at that point. And then, of course, uh, 2014, the Rotterdam Biennial uh, was uh, a very important leverage point. I mean, uh, the work of Fabric that was exhibited there uh, displayed, demonstrated uh, with a lot of uh, consistency uh, that it was possible uh, to uh, use that uh, to um, uh, kind of define a new way of uh, doing urban design that uh, it, uh, uh, it could uh, gain the uh, major uh, role or become the main character in your practice uh, beyond being a kind of a, a knowledge data uh, that would inform the things you were doing. That, that could become, as I said, uh, the real uh, protagonist of your work, the real, the center point. Uh, not just informing, but uh, kind of manipulating, trying to intervene upon the metabolic flows. So that was uh, 2014, the uh, Vienna was a very important uh, shifting uh, point uh, for us. I mean, of course, we had already started working on different projects, uh, trying to introduce this uh, understanding. But rather, as I said, it was rather an understanding about the ecological dynamics. So it was, uh, I mean, from uh, 2011, the master plan of uh, a park in, in, uh, in Antwerp, of course, the question of water is very present there, but also the question of wood, uh, which kind of a species, uh, how do they grow, uh, the question of factors. Uh, because there were a lot of uh, yeah, conflicts about uh, how much space can I use and what for. And, uh, and all this you start seeing that there is a kind of a conflict field eh, where uh, water is always pushed on the background <laughs> because mm -hmm. the football field needs a lot of space. So, and, uh, and that the football field is not really busy with uh, yeah, the kind of uh, yeah, uh, pollution uh, uh, they are kind of bringing or causing in the in the water courses of, of the park. So you start seeing that all these uh, factors are very much uh, uh, interacting, and that they result in a specific environment, and that you as designer can intervene upon all these things and try to uh, yeah create uh, bridges, but also uh, in a way uh, raise awareness about the situation situated uh, or the embedded, uh, embeddedness of uh, the things you do uh, and the impact they have on the organization of the environment. But okay, so I think 2014, uh, 2014 I think it was really very important for, for us as a kind of also confirmation uh, that uh, it made sense. I think there are a few which we had on the uh, starting from the economic point of view, um, where well there are three projects uh, of which one M4H uh, also in the framework of uh, IABR. Um, starting from yeah this kind of question about support economics um, as a kind of gateway, uh, being urbanized but yet searching for new economies and then um, yeah the question was kind of very broad kind of pilot project what is this economy about and and um, who are these people that are busy with it <laughs> because uh, the area which had been kind of uh, not neglected but be being kind of a um, 
transforming and, and being uh, kind of left behind by uh, big economies moving to the, to the, to the, uh, the main port. Um, leaving space behind, space to test, space to, for companies to, 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 to start doing things. Um, and I think the first thing that we started was exploring, talking to the people. Um, and this was, yeah, kind of uh, for everybody, also for the commissioner, a kind of uh, a surprise on how and, and, and um, yeah, what they were busy with, the, the companies. Um, and from there, we, we detected three uh, flows or uh, like building materials, ugly food and textile that for us kind of were an argument to, to, to look at, to, to, to make coalitions, uh, to start thinking about certain collaborations or... or because on the one hand, yeah, on the bigger scale, because these flows were passing by, you have to be close to the city to, to, to gather and collect agricultural monostreams or, or uh, agri-food monostreams. Um, for the textile, yeah, we saw that actually the port was a kind of a major knot uh, in this uh, more um, yeah, European but even uh, global uh, chain where there is an argument to start yeah, working also because the actors were there. So um, I think this is the most clear starting from yeah, the, the point of view of economies, how we could foster new economies, um, that we started to yeah, uh, document these flows in, in, in how they are being used already or how they could could make new projects by um, yeah, and I think the, the 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 main outcome, well, on the one hand, indeed, this kind of new imaginaries of of or yeah, the people that are busy with it actually, it was a major kind of uh, step, uh, a, a kind of uh, step forward to to, uh, to a project, but also um, getting these people, different people, the companies, but also uh, authorities. Uh, like sectoral uh, organizations or more socio-economic associations around the table mm -hmm. um, that they get to know each other um, so maybe there wasn't a clear kind of project in the end but there was a, a conversation and a kind of exchange that went different directions mm -hmm. not only yeah, the public authority uh, followed it up but also the private companies they, they started working with it um. But yeah, I think what is important is that uh, we don't have a single uh, way of working or using or uh, uh, there is no single way in which uh, our metabolism forms or directs uh, our work. So I think uh, what uh, Ian uh, is explaining is that, uh, for instance, uh, the project of Medvedfir Havens was probably the, together with the circular city ports the two projects that are most uh, directly related to, uh, uh, well, I mean, we, we talk nowadays rather about uh, circular economy because uh, we look at urban metabolism rather as a way to analyze, to understand uh, uh, the flows. And then we talk about circular economy in the sense of how we can intervene upon, how we can guide them in order to rethink our industrial system. Huh? So this is uh, very much the case. And then the question of the, this commission uh, that was put on our plate was uh, to circularize the Medvedfir Havens port area. And then uh, what we uh, answered to this uh, commissioner question was uh, maybe it's not about circularize, but it's asking the actors first of all what do they need in order to uh, first to know whether they are circular already and in case they are not, what they would need. So circularization is not something is not a normative framework you pose from the top and you say and now we are all going to become circular no but um, uh, for the kind of uh, port and city authorities it was obviously a kind of uh, an agenda point and they had to answer it in any way and they then they organized this competition and we are selected because we we said yeah okay but let's see what is there yeah and let's uh, understand better uh, what the actors need in order to become more circular. 
So, uh, and this is uh, what uh, this was a very interesting uh, way of working because then we made interviews with uh, with the companies and we a lot of uh, interviews with a lot of companies and then we were looking at the the growth story. So, uh, yeah, how how big they were and how fast their uh, growth had happened. And the growth has hap- had happened, but also why and they also the circular story. And in the growth story, one of the things we, we ask is, what do you dream of? Huh? I mean, in, uh, because uh, yeah, you have to be aware, your companies, they, have, they are profit-oriented. Eh? We are talking about companies based in the port. Uh, they are not there uh, to make us happy. <laughs> they are there to, <laughs> to become rich. <laughs> not to generate wealth. Eh? That can be redistributed, of course. I mean, it's not that they only... They also look to, uh, yeah, they have the ambition to generate jobs and to redistribute this wealth uh, through the job creation. So, but also the construction and the investment on new infrastructures. So, but uh, th- this was a very interesting uh, first uh, point because we understood better, or we thought we understood better first the kind of flows that were crossing the area. So, in the circular story of every company that was based on the on the port, uh, but also. Uh, w- what they what they saw in circularity that was important for them, and in which way they could incorporate it into their future plans, and then uh, at the same time it was very interesting because Metabolic was doing their metabolic study for Rotterdam, and they they had been mapping all the all the flows eh, of all the yeah, inputs and outputs of the city, and uh, by looking into their uh, research. Of course, we did not make this analysis at the scale of Rotterdam. We could identify, uh, we can kind of compare the, some of the flows they identify and the analysis they made, and we could uh, compare it to what was happening locally and identify which one of these flows were relevant for this area. To say, okay, then we came down to the question of, uh, after a lot of uh, uh, looking for the right flow, of course, we thought, okay, so building materials, notably, eh, because there are a lot of companies busy with uh, re- recycling, but also reuse, remanufacturing of uh, building uh, components there. Uh, textile, because it was a very important uh, point of collection of uh, textile, used textile, but also because we saw that there were a lot of, uh, in the surrounding neighborhoods, a lot of ateliers, notably where women were working, so it was the only possibility for immigrant women to find a job in a way, were nigh ateliers, so seawing ateliers, Mm -hmm. uh, to repair, to sort out, to recompose uh, this textile. So we thought it's a very interesting mix between the big scale of these big companies linked to this global supply chain to a local uh, economic dynamics of small uh, workshops. The same with the building materials, by the way, eh? because there were in the surrounding neighborhoods there were also a lot of small workshops that were linked to the bigger companies based in the in the harbor, where people were being formed in a different way of, uh, for instance, dismantling or demolishing buildings or reusing wood. They would. Uh, uh, kind of mine from the existing uh, building patrimony. And these people were obviously building uh, a network together with the companies based in the, in the harbor. So it was building companies, textile, and of course, uh, organic uh, waste. Eh? Because also there was a very important, a couple of very important companies, Grun Collect, Grun Collect and Sugu, busy with this uh, flow in different ways. Sugu in a much more experimental way, trying to develop new packaging forms, textiles, uh, uh, new products based on organic waste, and Hrun Collect, which is trying to uh, kind of diversify but the way of collecting uh, organic waste in order to be able to separate already some uh, flows that can be recuperated more easily, so to keep the purity of, of the organic waste flow. So this is what we did, and it was, I think, very interesting also to, to look at the uh, so the flow chart, trying to uh, make the flow chart based on the work that uh, uh, Metabolic had uh, done and to identify already the companies that were b- busy in the area on the immediate surroundings in order to see, okay, what can we do with them? Or in which way they could benefit from this organization? And then at the end, uh, uh, of course, I mean, uh, uh, our question in terms of uh, how we can answer all that uh, as urban designers and architects is to say you need to build specific infrastructures for these things to happen. I mean, you can, 
discover all these very nice initiatives, but uh, they need an infrastructure in order to survive. But it's always the same question. It doesn't matter if it's about mobility or organic waste. It's always all these people, they are very inventive and innovative, mm -hmm. but after a couple of years, if you don't, as public authority, you don't help them to uh, blossom, they will die away. Huh? So we, we kind of propose a series of three different uh, infrastructures, you could say pilot projects, in order for these people to meet, to share their uh, expertise and to keep on growing. Eh? So what we found through the interviews of uh, what is your dream, how do you see yourself growing in the area. So that was uh, uh, an extremely uh, interesting uh, parkour for, for us. Eh? So research uh, wise but also meeting the people, then we organize a series of uh, workshops at the end, but also in terms of identifying which kind of jobs are. So that, uh, uh, I mean, we think of circularity, but we don't think about all these expertises that are needed in order to, for the circularity to exist and to be realized. And this was very important in our work, actually. But then, yeah, of course, uh, here, uh, for instance, the work of Innovative Stats Havens, uh, these I printed some, uh, some things. For instance, for us in the beginning, when we started the project, all the uh, water as matter type of uh, reflection, so the fact that water contains a lot of nutrients but also sediments, and that uh, working on the a lunch area in Antwerp was a very kind of a strategic spot to think about all these uh, flows. But of course, this was not taken back by the client, the commissioner. So it's also Maybe we start from a specific point of view that might be metabolic in a way, but if the commissioner does not show any interest, we are also, I mean, we have a responsibility uh, with them. We have to provide a, a, an answer to the questions at the end. So we are forced to always re, reorient our project. So we were very interested in this kind of uh, path, huh? but uh, the, yeah. Vespa was really not interested at all. So we had, even though there were a couple of companies, because there we were also very closely working with companies and making interviews with them and also understanding the way they were operating. And even though there were a couple of uh, uh, companies very much interested, for instance, in this sediment thing, so the way they are doing, they are treating the sediments and the, the kind of uh, keeping the depth of the harbor today is totally responsible. Huh? But also in terms of the pollutants, uh, and there was a, a company which had been developing alternative to that. So there was a kind of a real possibility. But yeah, if Hage Vespa is not interested in that, and they are really much more focusing on building materials and mobility, yeah, you have to also kind of uh, react to, uh, to, to the way, uh, I mean, to the questions. Uh, at the end, you are paying a service and uh, providing a service. But uh, yeah, for instance, uh, in this project for, uh, for the Kustlint in, in Ostend, uh, but also, for instance, for the uh, strategic plan of uh, Vilborde, which is online, so I didn't uh, print it, uh, we uh, always started from uh, issues like circular economy or water management, or the, in this case, coastal defense. Uh, that... Uh, uh, already in the way we read the plays have a very important, play a very important role. Eh? So for instance here, the way we were reading the plays, and this is a scheme that for us was also very important eh, to discover all the different families that exist in a sustainable approach to urban design so that you can be yeah, uh, in the UPE, uh, urban political ecology, but you can be also an optimist, uh, uh, <laughs> technology optimist, <laughs> and all these things exist, coexist at the same time. Eh? Um, but uh, so, what I wanted to show, yeah, for instance, uh, one of the we kind of identified for difference of cities, for, for, for different cities uh, based on, uh, for instance, the flow of tourism. We were talking about this city that, uh, accordion city, that is designed in order to accommodate. A big amount of uh, tourists at certain moments throughout the year, but uh, at the same time has to live with this uh, uh, heritage of big infrastructure, oversized infrastructure throughout the year, even when all these people are not there. Yeah? So these kind of notions of 
uh, thinking, okay, for instance, all the mobility infrastructure is, is huge and it occupies an enormous amount of space. And then thinking, in a way, is a metabolic thinking, thinking about the flows, eh? but also in terms of the water, water, both the fresh water in terms of the consumption demands that have peaks during uh, summer, exactly at the moment where there is a period, a moment of drought. Eh? How do you live with that? But also the cost of defense to think, uh, okay, so this, this cost of defense is very much thought in the work we did in Ostend. What I was explaining is that uh, this uh, continuous uh, flow of sun that is being brought artificially into the, into the beach. Eh? So this replenishment of, of the beach with uh, sun coming from uh, the offshore uh, uh, mine areas. And then we thought, yeah, maybe uh, it, it would make sense to start thinking about uh, uh, regeneration of these beaches so that it become resilient against the, um, the force of the, of the sea, the waves, the storms. Uh, so we thought we started exploring the possibilities and then we discovered that uh, this has been uh, done by Delta Rays, for instance, in, in the Netherlands, to bring in uh, nutrients or to let parts of the beach to uh, keep the nutrients that are coming from the insects and some the, uh, huh, the decomposition of uh, some of the plants so that uh, you could create a kind of a green beach that would be uh, more resilient against the, the force of the, of the storms. Eh? So that uh, it would have the, the strength not to be washed out every time there is a storm. And this would, uh, it, to a certain way, to a certain extent, keep the sun that is being continuously brought in and out because of the force of the sea. So this is what the, yeah, the kind of uh, things we were uh, doing, but also uh, looking into the port area, we uh, kind of discovered some sections of how the, the, the docks were uh, built and then we saw that there are, uh, the rainwater used to be collected on the sides of the dock uh, in order to be reused for uh, washing the fish in the, in the past. And then we kind of wanted to reuse and uh, uh, restore uh, these uh, water conducts that are uh, now in the in the harbor in order to collect the rainwater and reuse it in, in new industrial processes. Doesn't matter. But so this thinking is there also for mobility, uh, water, yeah, for a lot of in and a lot of. But it's not equally uh, uh, kind of visible or. Uh, being or it does not inform our work to the same extent. It depends very much because we are in CIS, we are service providers, depends very much whether the commissioner takes it back or mm -hmm. embraces it and says, okay. Coming back to what I started explaining that indeed this lecture was by Fabric, of course, Eric Freiters. Uh, Eric Freiters. Yeah. Um, and what struck me then, and, and the thing I uh, started developing from there, or looking for, is that at first it was more about the kind of um, looking what is there, like uh, quantitatively, most of all, where it's going, um, spatial bound, but also in volumes, and, and um, it was eye-opening, but it stayed also very on the kind of abstract. And at that time, the discussion was also, from the critical point of view, yeah, but what's next? How are we going to do this? Who will be doing this? Uh, because then everybody claims, uh, can claim uh, yeah, to use this, these flows and these kind of opportunities maybe uh, to, 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 to do their own projects. So, um, who then yeah, kind of gets a position to, to act upon this flow uh, is very interesting um, well, for me to look at. I think um, to make a kind of overview of our analysis of different offices, I, I'm, I'm not really sure I could, I could make straight away. Um, I think in a way um, that's also what Nadia explained is kind of, yeah, you can read inside the, your commission, you can yeah, read the city in that way with the, 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 the lenses of urban metabolism, metabolism, which is helpful. But at the end, it's about yeah, the, the um, making, yeah, about the commission, about uh, who, is the, who is making the, the commission and, and who takes 
who has the ability to take it further. Um, and from that point of view, I think a lot has changed. Um, also, OVAM, after this M4H uh, commission, looked at circular city ports. We uh, researched it the past year um, and still going on with AWB, Architecture Workroom. And there you see actually that um, throughout all Delta, because we did a benchmarking of 11 city ports, uh, with the knowledge we had from Ostende, from Innovative Stadsau in Antwerp, from Rotterdam, we also looked at the French ports uh, and uh, even to the Hamburg, so the Le Havre Hamburg range. That actually, um, and it's quite re representative, I think, for what's going on, is that every port was busy with this, this taking on certain ambitions to, to look at its flows to, uh, from the point of view of circular economy, uh, to start acting upon it with, with some new initiatives, but that there was also kind of, this knowledge was very partial, that they were all doing the same, but on their own, um, well, at the same kind of ambitions or, or um, um, not to say that everybody has to do it the same way or to do it as the, the, the other ports, but it was uh, interesting to see that um, that they didn't really know what was going on in the other ports, that they were also very interested to, to, to learn from each other, to, to, to... And what we emphasized there was that, or like Nadia also says, there is not one way to, to do things. Um, it comes very much on, on the situation or the context, the size of, of the port or, or the actors that are there or the, 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 the socio-economic uh, dynamics. Um, you can be, yes, you can be circular in many ways. Eh? For a port uh, to define a circular mm -hmm. agenda, they can be based on yeah, profit, volume, uh, recycling, uh, remanufacturing. I mean, there are uh, there is a wide, uh, uh, a very long list of uh, uh, priorities you can define in your circularity agenda, and mm -hmm. this is very much what we discovered, oh. actually. That, uh, but yeah, that they were nevertheless, uh, despite the fact that all these uh, initiatives are very uh, kind of rooted in specific places and contexts, and they depend also uh, to a certain extent to, uh, on the inertia that has been created in the past, that they were nevertheless very interested to know yeah, what others are doing, obviously. I mean, it's like <laughs> what we are doing. Mm -hmm. But in terms of practices, I think uh, that uh, there are many, many ways of. Uh, um, kind of uh, integrating this uh, metabolic understanding of cities in, your, in the way you work, uh, certainly. Uh, we, for instance, you did not uh, take part on that uh, research, but uh, when we were working with Farik on the uh, uh, Atelier Brussels, uh, then you, you see that, uh, of course, they have uh, an incredibly, uh, incredible knowledge of how to uh, um, gather the quantitative data and how to represent that. But at the end, uh, what uh, we found it was missing is a bit this uh, kind of uh, attention to the capacities, local capacities of a territory. Mm -hmm. So that you cannot come uh, always with a one-size-fits-all one approach, uh, that there are not uh, uh, re repli uh, replicable solutions that uh, you can uh, adopt everywhere, like uh, it's a checklist and now we do that and that and that. And this is what we found that maybe this is what we could contribute with and already I think the discussions about the methodology and the, the fact that it was not just because there was a lack of time and a lack of a budget to do a very uh, all-encompassing metabolic analysis of Brussels, but to decide to work on specific uh, areas. That was, uh, I think, already something weird to them, a huh? uh, different approach of, uh, of looking at uh, metabolism, f more from the local scale, what was uh, going to be uh, found. But also in terms, and this is probably what was missing at that moment, eh? In terms of the actors, you could uh, uh, engage and involve in your... Uh, because at the end, it's not just about a descriptive uh, or analytical tool, it's about a transformation tool. So uh, you need to count on people, specific people, and capabilities in order to go forward. I mean, for us, it's very much that. It's you, it's, we are not... I mean, 
uh, of course we, uh, you can say you are very much paper architects or because yeah we draw a lot of things and uh, very little of what we draw is actually implemented but our ambition is to <laughs> go for change i mean we don't want to keep on uh, drawing uh, things but non nonetheless this this um, yeah uh, the the quantities and the, the the knowledge the data is very important to make a project if you for example, with, with master plans as well, if you, you know the figures of how big the building is and how, how many water it can collect and how big then your landscape has to absorb or, or be a sponge, then you have, yeah, you have the... And, uh, you have a kind of tool to, to design, you have uh, an argument to, to, yeah, to make a project. So it's, it's important, on, uh, this data is, is, is the, yeah, it's, it's the basis. But it shouldn't end there. It should, uh, yeah. It should make a project, and this project is for for uh, an, uh, yeah, the future. So <laughs> indeed, for but change. specific people and places. So and not all places and people uh, can uh, reach the same level of uh, engagement, transformation. They don't have the same means. So this is also you have to uh, be careful with that, huh? so that you don't also for us that you don't create situations that are. Uh, uh, impossible for the people to uh, to embrace and to engage with. Mm -hmm. huh? So, but also, for instance, any uh, them in the southern part of uh, Brussels, that was very much the case. We came with a section based on, uh, yeah, the productive landscape, agricultural landscape, and then after many interviews and many workshops, uh, you start realizing that. Uh, uh, I mean, all these actors, and especially uh, uh, farmers uh, who have uh, been signing contracts with uh, big companies, they are completely captured, trapped in a situation they cannot easily escape. So it's not just about coming up with a, a nice future of this is where you should go uh, towards, but it's also about providing a, a kind of an action plan of how can you get rid of uh, the, the system you are uh, trapped into. Huh? So it's, I, I think for us this is, uh, this is uh, very important. Maybe uh, the, all the quantitative part, we do not uh, spend much time uh, honestly um, uh, analyzing that we use some of the some numbers uh, also for mobility now mm -hmm. uh, some numbers related to flows in order to have a better idea of uh, what we can do uh, in order to uh, change the situation uh, so what is the, the extent of uh, the problem uh, but uh, our approach is very much based around uh, yeah actors and uh, institutions and uh, yes, what can we do? Uh, a change takes, what you say, action plan, it takes years to, yeah, to... To realize. To realize, to, or to, yeah, to start somewhere, but the end, uh, to end where, where you want to, to, to be, or, or yeah, reevaluate. So it, it needs um, embeddedness, kind of actors that, 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 that stay, that, that, that keep on uh, or, yeah, or, or making them capable of, of doing it. But on the other hand, connecting this to a more um, yeah, overall um, uh, institutions or, or, or programs or, or policies that, that, that also provide these this local uh, developers or, or area managers or, or farmers uh, for that sake mm -hmm. with the, um, yeah, the tools and the vision also, this, this, the framework uh, in, in which they can, uh, can do it. Yeah, so I think uh uh, what is very important is uh, this uh, reality check, huh? so this attachment to reality, to see uh, what is there already, uh, who is operating there and what are their capabilities. Also for public authorities in all levels, huh? uh, they, are, they, are, they have very much the tendency to uh, uh, impose or uh, propose uh, uh, in the best case scenario, a uh, different way of organizing uh, territories or flows. Uh, 
but uh, uh, there is very little knowledge about uh, uh, the kind of initiatives or the kind of actors that are uh, already busy with that. And uh, I think uh, the first, uh, very, I think very much is uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, local situated knowledge. Uh, I think it's a responsibility for uh, everyone who is trying to intervene uh, on the organization of space, the organization of space and flows and actors. You need to know that before doing anything. So I, I think this, and, and then of course uh, the second step would be uh, to identify uh, actors or institutions or organizations that are already more or less consolidated in these territories that can act as area managers, eh? that can further this uh, ambition to work with flows but also uh, uh, change the industrial system into a more circular one, from a linear to a more circular one. So to identify these kind of uh, key actors that uh, become uh, the magnets eh, of uh, transformation. But of course, I mean, this is very much uh, local, eh, uh, bottom-up, uh, local scale. What can you do uh, when you are uh, urban? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think keep on uh, doing a lot of things. Eh? Because on one hand, you have this task of agenda setting and raising awareness and convincing your politicians of a different way of understanding what is uh, at stake, bringing in uh, uh, benchmark, uh, benchmarking analysis of what happens elsewhere. Uh, uh, so I think this is this is very important. So there is a kind of uh, educating your politicians, especially in in uh, in Belgium. In in the Netherlands, it's very different because the politicians do not have such a uh, the last voice uh, in, into into the matter. Is actually the technical body, the specialists, who decides at the end. Eh? And then you see also the differences. Of course, with a lot of problems, because there they have a very, uh, an approach that is highly infrastructural. Eh? And uh, you can also have second thoughts about that, but okay, at least... Uh, but okay, uh, in the case of Belgium, you have to educate your politicians. You have to, indeed, I think, agree in a white paper in order to... Uh, uh, you can have frame uh, they can have the questions that are at stake uh, and the impact these questions or these challenges uh, the impact they, they can have eventually on how you think about uh, competitions uh, small projects so at different scales uh, so from the public procurement uh, so that you kind of bring in these questions from very early on and these uh, very specific methodologies, but also until the, the small uh, execution project of a public space that you have this uh, uh, kind of uh, basic knowledge to know, okay, it's important to think about that. Eh? So for instance, when we make a, a square, even if it's this is a stupid square here, uh, that we think about water, I mean, water management, rainwater management, there is nothing. We all know for years that uh, we cannot keep on using the sewage for the rainwater. It doesn't make any sense, it's a waste. So yeah, that all these things are kind of, that you create a kind of a, a body of knowledge that is uh, easily accessible for very different levels, but they know this is the, this is the way to go. Yeah? So, uh, but then you were also asking about the link to the academia, and I think this is extremely important. I mean, uh, uh, to form uh, through university because you give access to the students to a different way of understanding uh, cities and a different way of uh, reading and measuring uh, all these flows, I think is crucial. I mean, if you don't form uh, the next generation into a different way of understanding what is at stake, I mean, nothing is going to move. It's, uh, <laughs> they are. <laughs> 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 they are the next. Uh, I mean, <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, it's, it's fundamental. And then for me, it's still again uh, amazing that uh, uh, within the faculty uh, that you have, you are being uh, criticized continuously. That you are found irrelevant. Uh, too specific, uh, that you are kind of put aside of the architectural faculty because you are too, too specific for our days. We should be doing, uh, talking about buildings and composition and that's it, that's it. So this is, I think, problematic. I think we cannot go on like that. And then, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, OVA can also uh, have, uh, and in fact they are having, 
a big impact in, in the way yeah, new uh, doctoral dissertations are being proposed, the uh, support they get, uh, the kind of uh, integration of this uh, more fundamental research into apply, uh, applied projects. I think this is uh, fundamental that OVAM supports this line of research at university and that the people who are busy with that, uh, yeah, they do not get uh, discouraged, but rather get an opportunity of uh, yeah, now going to the city of Leuven and explain what, uh, what you're doing and look for ways of uh, applying it, but also together with OVAM, do not forget uh, this kind of multi-level, uh, so you need to continuously work at different levels. So yeah, of course, but there is no single answer. Huh? But yeah, at least uh, yeah, you have the technical uh, knowledge that is uh, terribly missing the politicians who are completely uh, ignorant of what is at stake. And then uh, the, the future, the next generations, you need to involve them. Right.